Krita is a powerful and free art program. Let's use it to make a webtoon from start to finish. Hey, Walter here, doing what I can to make comics easier because it shouldn't be overwhelming or daunting to tell your story. I make videos about comics and art, so if that's something you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And today we are going to be going over the ins and outs of Krita to make a webtoon comic. So hit that like button and let's get started. First thing, we're gonna need a canvas to draw on. So one way to do it would be to create a new canvas that is 800 pixels by 1280 pixels. This is the requirements for webtoon as far as the largest file you could upload. So if we go ahead and do that, that's gonna open up this file and we can draw our panel in here. If you notice, we run out of room pretty quick. So that means we would have to open up another file at the same size, draw our panel in, and then another one. And you realize that quickly, you're gonna have a whole bunch of files, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use my template, which you can download for free. I'll put the link in the description. So each of these columns are 800 pixels wide, which is the minimum. Now, if you wanna go larger than that so that you can add more detail, then go to image, scale image to new size, and just increase the size there. These red areas on my template are the bleed areas. If you want your art to go to the very edges of Webtoon, draw and color into these uh, bleed sections. Now that we have our canvas, let's go ahead and start the art. Let's assume that we have a script that looks like this. Episode one, panel one, establish a school, kids walk towards it, Sam says, you ready for the test? Panel two, Sam and Sarah walking towards the school. Sarah is worried. No, not at all. You, panel three, Sam laughs. Sam, I am 0% ready. The first thing we're gonna do is thumbnail our comic. Some people call this panel layout or storyboarding. Thumbnail is a standard US comic term. Basically just quick sketching out your story so that we can see that everything works without spending too much time on drawing. I have other videos about this, so make sure you check those out. So let's pick a brush we wanna use. I'm going to use their basic five size brush. I'm gonna use full opacity and size at 12. You can use the slider to change it or type it in here. Now these are the settings that I like. Of course, you should play around with different stuff. Try different brushes, see what works for you. Uh, here's the racer if you want that, cause you know we're gonna be needing that. And if you want even more control, this button right here will take you to the brush settings and there's a crap ton of stuff you can change in there and get to your preference. So to do the thumbs, we're going to create a new layer, rename that layer thumbs. We do that by double clicking. And then we're gonna sketch our story out in thumbnails really quick. Remember thumbnails don't need a lot of details, just simple shapes, stick figures, and then placement of the word balloons. Now that we have our thumbs, we are ready to pen sync. Pen sync is a term I made up for penciling and inking at the same time. Since we're working digitally, there's no reason really to waste time sketching, penciling, and inking. Just go straight to the inks. If there's something that is too hard to just ink straight off, you can create a new layer and then sketch in there really quick and then ink over the top of that. Notice that when I'm inking, I close off the shapes in the bleed area. I'm gonna show you why I do this later. Because we're working digitally, this is a cool trick we can do. We're gonna create a new temporary layer and then we're gonna draw all the students walking towards the building. But you can see I'm just drawing the, the kids overlapping the school, but I'm not worried about that now. Once I'm done, I can go back to the Pence ink layer and then erase all the places where the kids overlap the school. And now I just go back to our temporary layer, right click on it, and then just have it merge with the layer below. And now we're back to one layer and we're good to go. There's also the flip side to it where I can draw this cloud going on top of the school on our temporary layer. Then I can go and erase the cloud without affecting the pens ink layer. And you do the same thing, you just merge it with the layer below. Now this panel has a panel border, so let's go ahead and create that. First thing is to create a new vector layer. We're gonna name it panels and then we're gonna select the rectangle tool. And we just drag that out to create the panel. There's a bunch of settings up here in the upper right that you can change how thick it is. And you also wanna make sure that you don't have a fill in there cause that's gonna show color on the inside of the box. We don't want that, we would just want it clear. But we do want a border, we do want to stroke around it using the brush and making sure that it is black. And we're just gonna go ahead and create the other panel while we're at it. If you had a whole bunch of panels, you could just do this all at once. I also like to lock my panel layer so I don't accidentally start drawing on it. Okay, and here's the trick that if you're having a hard time pence inkling, just create a new temporary layer 
and just start sketching or penciling like you would usually when you're trying to figure out a drawing. Once you figure it out, just go ahead and lower the opacity on that. You can turn off your thumbnail layer so you can see your sketch layer a little better. And then just go ahead and ink on your pen's ink layer. And once you're done, just delete that temporary layer and you're good to go. All right, so we're gonna move on to the coloring phase. Go ahead and create a new layer, rename it flats or colors. We're gonna use a few different tools here. We're gonna use the paint bucket tool or the fill tool. We're gonna use the lasso tool and also the rectangle select tool. Now you can see there I filled in the color and that completely wiped out our lines. What we need to do is we need to go to the layer type or the blending mode for our flats layer and we need to change it to multiply instead of normal. Then we use the paint bucket tool to go in and quickly fill in the colors. Now you can see when I put that white color down for the clouds it only fills in next to those lines and that's why I closed off those shapes when I was doing the inking. Now, sometimes you might not have perfectly closed off your shapes and then the paint bucket is gonna fill outside of that. So your choices there are either to go back to the Pence ink layer and fill in those lines with the gaps where the, your ink lines are, or you can use the lasso tool and select those areas specifically and then fill it in that way. Now, if you'll notice some of these places where I'm doing the paint bucket tool, the lines are going past the ink lines and that's because of the uh, grow selection option for the paint bucket tool you're going to have to figure out exactly what pixel size that needs to be for your particular art style and also for the size of the brush that you're using so i'm just going to go through and fill in the colors for all of these things just simple basic colors i have another video where I go into more detail about my coloring process. So check out that video if you want more details and theory behind coloring. So there you can see I use the lasso tool to select a huge area. And then you can either use edit and fill selection with the foreground color, or you can use the paint bucket tool. There is a lot of theory and technique around coloring. I'm not doing any of that here. I'm just laying down really quick flat colors. Like I said, watch my coloring videos if you want more insight into how to color or what colors look good. So you can see there, I just used the rectangle select tool and just selected the entire panel and then went to edit and fill selection with the foreground color just to set the color for that particular panel. And then it's easy for me to just go in and use the paint bucket tool or the lasso tool to put the colors in for each different element. And here I am using the option for the paint bucket tool, which changes your paint bucket tool to a eyedropper tool, which selects a color that's on your canvas right now. So to do that, I believe for Krita, you hold the control key down. You'll notice that the paint bucket tool changes to a little eyedropper tool. You can click that on your canvas for the color that you want. And that's how I was picking up the orange hair, the skin color and et cetera from our second panel to be used in the third panel. Okay, and so here I'm doing a trick that's a quick way to do backgrounds. You'll notice I didn't really ink anything in the background for that third panel, but I just did some really quick selects to add color back there to kind of do an abstract background. Uh, no one's really gonna notice that the lines aren't back there. Their brain is gonna fill in all the detail that you didn't put in. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is add our shadow layer. So create a new layer, rename it shadows, and set the blend style to multiply. Now you're gonna wanna pick a light purple pinkish blue color that we're gonna use for the shadows. Now use the lasso tool to select sections where you think the shadows would land. And then use your paint bucket tool to take that purple color you selected and just paint bucket into your selection. And you'll notice it's a really quick way to add shadows and make your colors a little bit more interesting. When you're doing colors, by the way, think about where the light is coming from and also think about uh, objects casting shadows on other objects like the hair on Sarah is casting shadow on her face. It's a really good way to create depth in your drawings. A quick note with coloring and selection tools. For this, we don't want to have anti-aliasing on, especially when you're doing the flatting section. It's gonna give you a nice soft edge, but it's also gonna look blurry. So if you have to do other things, it's gonna start getting blurrier and blurrier. So just leave anti-aliasing off. If you zoom in on that, it's gonna look really pixelated, but no one's gonna be zooming in on your artwork like that. They're gonna be zoomed out. It's gonna look fine. And that is the actual purple color that I'm using so you can see what it looks like. 
So here I'm just extending the sidewalk down into the second panel. It's just something really cool that you can do with Webtoon. Okay, the next step is going to be the lettering. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new layer. I'm gonna fill it with white and then I'm gonna lower the opacity. And the reason I do that is so that when I am adding the lettering, I can actually see the lettering and my inking lines don't interrupt the view. So what you're gonna wanna do is hit the text tool and then you just click on the screen. Now I'm gonna be using Out of Line, which is a font that I downloaded for free from blambot.com. And for my pixel settings, I'm going to be using 15 for the font size. And make sure that your font color is black. Now if you'll notice, when I type these words out, there is a huge amount of space between each line. Now that's a lot of wasted space. Now. Krita doesn't have a easy way to do this, which is unfortunate, but there is a way to fix it. When you go into the text tool edit window here, click on the SVG tab, and then we're gonna change this setting. The value that you put in is gonna be dependent on the font and the size that you're using, but we're gonna go ahead and use 20. Now go ahead and double click here and copy the 20 PT because we're gonna wanna reuse this. So every time we put a new text in there, we're gonna to have to do this every time. It's kind of annoying. So make sure you copy that so you can just do a quick uh, double click and a control V to paste it. Now just enter the rest of your dialogue. Remember to change that setting for the line spacing. Now once we have all that in there, we're ready to move on to the word balloons. So create a new vector layer and rename it balloons and then click on your rectangle tool and we're gonna go up here and we're gonna change the setting for round X and round Y. I like to use 300 for X and 500 for Y. And this is gonna give us a nice kind of rounded rectangle. I like to use a rounded rectangle versus a circle because it gives you a little bit more space for the dialogue. If you were to use a plain circle, it kind of collapses too quickly at the top. And so you won't be able to get as many words in there but the rounded rectangle is more visually pleasing, I think, than just a harsh straight rectangle. So the settings for our round balloon are going to be a white fill. So choose a white color and say fill with the foreground color. And then also make sure that your outline is set to none because we don't want the outline in there right now. Now place a balloon everywhere for your text. You're gonna have to move your balloon layer under your text layer. Now once you have all your balloons in place, what you're gonna wanna do is click right click on the balloon layer and go to layer styles. And from there, we're gonna wanna add a stroke. Just click on stroke, make sure you hit the little checkbox, and then pick the size of the stroke that you want. Again, it's gonna be dependent on your size. You kind of want your stroke to be slightly thicker than your thickest inking line so that it sticks out from those. So you'll see that puts a nice outline around all of our balloons, but we're not quite done yet. We wanna add a tail to each of these balloons. So click on the Bezier line tool, if I'm pronouncing that right. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is click in three places. You click once inside your balloon, and then once outside of your balloon, but hold the mouse button down and then pull out. That's gonna create this little handlebar where you can curve that line. Once you get it where you want it, Go ahead and let go and then click another point back inside of your balloon holding down the button again or your stylus again and pulling out that handle to make it have a nice curve shape to it and you want this point to point at the character's mouth or whatever is talking and then finally click back to your original point to close it off and you'll see that it merges the two shapes together and there you go that's your word balloon. All right, so I think our comic is mostly done here. The final thing we have to do is prep our comic for upload to Webtoon. First thing we do is create a new file. We're gonna set this file to 800 by say 30,000. All right, so now that we have our new file, we go back to our original comic file and we're gonna wanna use the marquee selection tool to select our first column. Make sure you go into that bleed area so that you get all of the artwork. Now go back to our new file and hit Control V or go to Edit Paste to get that column into our new file. Use the Move tool to get it at the very top of our page or wherever we wanna put it and make sure that we get the right sides of the art in there with the bleed going out to the edges. Repeat that for as many columns as you have. Of course, we only have our two columns. 
Now, when I paste this second column in here, you're gonna notice some of that white space wants to overlap that first column. So we can just do a quick fix here by setting the blending style for the second column to multiply. Now that white is gonna kind of vanish on top of the first column's artwork. So get those two columns situated to where you want them, how much spacing you want between all of them. And now what we have to do is cut off all of that unused space. And we're gonna do that with the crop tool. Crop tool is really easy to use. It's like the marquee selection tool. We just highlight, we click and drag, getting all of the artwork that we want in this little box. And then you just hit enter and it cuts everything else out. All right, so this is our entire comic, but if we look at the file size, we're gonna notice that it's too big for the requirements for Webtoon. Webtoon wants 800 by 1280. Ours is like 800 by 4,000 something. So what we wanna do is we wanna export this file as a JPEG file. And then we're gonna go to a website called Croppy, which is super easy to use. Just pull it up, that's the link. Make sure that line Webtoon is selected. Go to their file, wherever you saved it, click on it, upload it. And you're going to notice that it splits it. It might take a long time if you have a really long comic, but you can see that it's splitting the comic like in between artwork or in between word balloons. That doesn't matter right now because when you upload it to Webtoon, it's going to merge it all together without any spacing. And then you just download the zip file that it creates. And if you look in the contents of that zip file, you're going to see all of your files in there. And those are what you're going to upload to Webtoon. So with Webtoon, you log in, click on your name, go to Dashboard, and you're gonna see your comics in there. Now, if you don't already have a series created, just click on Create Series, pick your genres, pick your name, put a description in, whatever. Now, once you have your comic, just go to your comic in your dashboard and hit Add Episode. Fill in the episode information and then click Select Files to Upload, select the files that Croppy just cut up, Make sure that they're all in order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Put in some notes and then just hit publish. Now the comic is uploaded, people can read it, click on it, check it out, make sure that it all looks good. And then of course, click on the heart button just to like your own comic, because why not? You did a lot of work for it. It deserves your own love as well as other people's love. And then why not put a little comment in there thanking people for reading and just saying, anything that's important that comes to your mind about that episode or whatever is going on in your life so people can also reply to that comment because when they reply to that comment, you're gonna get notifications about that. Now, if we look closely at my artwork, you're gonna see where some of my paint bucket tools did this weird artifacting where it didn't quite cover up the line and that is gonna be that growth option for the paint bucket tool and so obviously I didn't have my settings right you're gonna to wanna to mess with your own uh, grow selection options here. I should have had mine around three pixels, depending on how thick your lines are. You might have to use different settings. Like if I use a huge amount, you can see how the color goes outside of the hair by a huge amount. So you obviously wouldn't want it too big. You don't want it too small. And that's it. That's our entire comic uploaded for people to read using Krita. That should get you started on your Krita comic journey safe travels send me a postcard when you get to the other side otherwise known as a link to your comic and if you want to support me and these videos why not check out my comics that you can purchase online at the link down below and if you want to keep making comics easier be sure to like link love hug and hit that sub button for more sweet sweet goodness catch you in the next video peace